Hi, my name is Aaron Rhodes from Falafel Software. You're watching the Rad Editor Content Filter Tutorial. In this session, we're going to take a look at the different ways of using the default content filters of the Rad Editor and create a custom filter that will convert text for us. During this video, there may be code examples written in either Visual Basic or C Sharp. However, the concepts are the same and code is provided for you in both languages. In this example, we're going to create a custom content filter that converts the text in our text area from Pig Latin and back again when we switch between the design and HTML views. Now I've started by creating an ASP.NET AJAX enabled website. Additionally, I've dropped a single RAD editor onto the form and I've also added the RAD spell dictionaries into the app data folder so we won't have an error when we try and run this because of the missing dictionary libraries. So let's just start by taking a look at the properties of the RAD editor so we can find actually where in the properties view those content filters are. Right under behavior they show up here as a drop down list of checkboxes. We can choose any of these checkboxes. The default filters here checks the default ones that you see checked there, but if we uncheck that we can select individual ones that will then work the way we want them to. For an explanation of what all these filters do, you can refer to the link above. And we're also going to take a look now at an example of how to set that in server-side code and then how they behave when they're run. So I'm going to double click on my form and this will bring up our page load event. And we'll just insert the standard if page is postback code so that this is only done once. And then we're going to add a little bit more code here. Right here this is how you would set your content filters. So you would use the Telerik web.ui editor filters and we're going to use uh, make URLs absolute and fix enclosing P and you OR them to set the enumeration and that's how you would set them in server-side code and that would override whatever settings they were at at the time. Now if you wanted to unset one of those then you could disable it by here's the enable filter which is one way of enabling so we're going to enable the fix closing P or we could disable it and that's what we'll do here so the end effect of this block of code that we have right now is that we're setting it to make URLs absolute and fix in closing P and then we're unsetting fix in closing P so we're left with just the make URLs absolute filter and now uh, let's go ahead and then set the content of our rad editor here. So here's our content and we're going to just put in a simple a fake URL here but the URL is not absolute it's a relative path and that's going to be the content when we can run it it's actually just going to say foo as the link and then we're going to see how it behaves when, we, when that content filter is applied to it. So let's run this. And you may get this debugging window. I just click OK on here. All right. Now here is our editor and we see we have that link to foo in our text. And when we go over here, look, it's taken that files slash foo HTML, which was the relative URL and it's added my localhost colon port name from when I'm running here on my um, Visual Studio environment. And then when we go back here we see it's still the foo but uh, that's how that filter behaves. That's one of the default filters that you have. Now we can leave that filter just the way it is but I'm also going to change the content here to just a little nursery rhyme. There we go. So we have Jack and Jill in the text there. And then we're going to be setting the filter. So first we have to create the filter. 
I'm going to do it right below this div. Uh, so my filter, and of course this this has to be in a script tag. So let's let's do that. All right, and then there's our closing script, which I'll just copy below here. And there's our filter function. And these are some of the various things you can set for it. So we could actually set the description to editor uh, pig Latin filter. OK. And now we need to set that function. We have to create that function so it's set to a certain client side event for our rad editor. So I'm creating the fil the function. It's called on client load, and it adds my filter, which is this, to our filter manager. Now, if we go back to design and click there, then we can go up to our client side events, and on client load is the one we want. So we're going to use. the function name on client load because that's what we called it in the JavaScript. Alright, so now that's set, but it really doesn't do anything yet. We need to make the prototype for the filter. So I'm just going to paste this in here and this prototype then uses the get HTML content and get design content functions of the content filters for the rad editor and that's those functions are actually being called whenever you switch between that design and HTML tag on the bottom of the rad editor so these are the ones that are going to be called and uh, now we're going to have two functions convert from pig latin and convert to pig latin that's going to take our content from the function and we'll, we create we assign it to new content so we can manipulate it and return it right there of course we don't have the convert from pig latin or convert to pig latin functions yet we're going to create those right in javascript so here's the first one it's a simple little function that i'm going to use to convert to pig Latin and it just splits the words apart using the space as the splitter and and then performs the operation of, of uh, converting it to pig Latin by taking the last consonant putting on the front and the first consonant putting on the back and then adding a and then returning it and we need another function for converting back because if you don't convert it back, then the text is going to stay just the way it is when you're in the design view. And then if you switch back and forth, it'll convert it one way over and over again instead of one way and then back again. So it's very important that you have both of those in that instance. And that brace is in the wrong place there, so that fixes it up. All right, and then you need to register this class. So the registering line here is my filter, which is this class, the filter class, which we've created as a filter, and we're registering it as a editor filter. Now that's all we need to do to make this work. So let's run this and see how it works out. All right, so we have Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Yay! And then when we switch to HTML, ACJ, INDE, ILJ. All right, so it's converted to Big Latin. When we switch back here, it's back to regular text.
and that's how it's intended to be used. You might use it for a more functional purpose, like filtering some specific HTML elements that you don't want, or maybe using some complex regex to form some things the way you want. Maybe, maybe you're creating a profanity filter that takes some naughty words and then converts it to stars or something similar for a blogging software. And that's what this would be used for in a custom filter. This concludes our tutorial. For more information, follow the links above. And thanks for watching.